and uh, that happened in Denmark and many brothers and sisters uh, start, have, have started to, to, to look at this problem as a serious problem and uh, it's, it's not only about uh, it's, it's not only an issue about uh, uh, making a ramp or making a, a, a brave woods or something like that it's very that all these material things are very very important but what I find most important is the change in our minds, the change, uh, the change of uh, of what we read about to practice what we read about. We read about having uh, compassion, about having uh, mercy to other people. But the important thing is: do we practice it or not? Do we practice it from the from the most little, the, the most the, the smallest things to the biggest things? Or are we just reading about something and we just forget about it, even when we see something in, in some some people in need? Uh, I think that that is the the most important things. The other things are are like in the second in the second place. I I I, I grew up in uh, in Argentina uh, with a disability that is very rare. In Argentina, I didn't get any help from the state. Not as in Ghana or as in, in the UK, and uh, even though it was like that, uh, I had the, the help from my family, of course, and uh, I had the, the 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 will to to uh, carry on and to to fight for for the things that we we as human beings have right to, and I mean that, or I uh, yeah I mean that. That is, is something that our communities in, in both in, in Denmark and in the UK too has to take very very seriously uh, because there are many I know there are many people that uh, with disabilities that are uh, excluded uh, maybe not conscious but with the, uh, when we forget about them then we exclude them so uh, what we have to do is to uh, to change our mindset. And to if we don't see them, then search for them for the uh, because <laughs> because uh, uh, we learn about in Islam we learn about all the 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 baraka and the other that, that we have helping each other. So instead of uh, instead of running away from it, we should search for this. Uh, that's that's my opinion. Um, so I think that is uh, something that. Is uh, growing. It's growing in Denmark and it's growing in the UK too. Uh, and uh, with the with the help of Kitaba, we see that it's, it's something that uh, uh, has grown and something that uh, not only is, is about uh, helping blind people, but it's about uh, helping uh, every human being that has a disability uh, to be a part of the community. So I think. Uh, uh, even though we have to fight for these things uh, as disabled uh, people with disability, uh, we we uh, we have a, a future that is very bright because uh, the things that we read about in, in Islam about uh, uh, being uh, having compassion with each other, helping each other, and so on, they are growing. They are growing, and they they can't stop. I think. Uh, in the next few years, we will see very big things that are going to happen in, both in Denmark and in the UK in regard to this. So I'm very positive about uh, the future, and I hope uh, that every brother and sister that uh, attend this uh, this meeting will think about this. Will think about what the next time they see someone with a disability. Uh, that this is a person too. This is a person that has needs, <coughs> as everybody that has uh, uh, needs to be a, needs to be a part of the community, that, as everybody. So uh, I think uh, I hope that when when we leave uh, this meeting, then that we will think about these things and how we can do it better for for brothers and sisters that have a disability. So. Uh, well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yes, it's, I think that's all for my time.
questions for Ricardo? Can you tell us about when you went to uh, Umrah, some of the difficulties that you faced? The, the disabilities, uh, the, the difficulties were, there were a few, but, but uh, uh, most, most of all for, for, for my part is, is the, the, uh, when you meet someone that uh, doesn't uh, look at you as a person, you know? The, the the physical disability, the physical difficult difficulties, they are always there. But when you meet someone that, that is not willing to help you, uh, as the problem is right, and that's in the book. When you know when you get to a hotel and you have booked the room, and the 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 people from the hotel doesn't even want to help you to find a better room, and you are in a city that's holy, you know, and you know that you, you get so much uh, uh, rewards for being good and you meet these kind of people, that's, that's the, the things that, that um, uh, were like bigger for me than getting into a bus with no lift uh, because we have this, we, we, we booked a book, uh, bus with a, with a lift but we got a normal bus and with no lift, but that's, it doesn't matter for me. What what's, what matters for me is when you miss people like this, and, and this is like a bigger uh, bigger difficulties. Uh, so that happened at, uh, sometimes when when uh, people saw me because I'm uh, I, I drive I, by myself, and so people were very very uh, they they thought it was strange that not no one pushed me, but I'm used to to drive myself, so it's not a problem for me. So. Uh, um, that happens sometimes when uh, when uh, someone or when I wanted to go to the Kaaba and we were stopped because I was in the, in the wheelchair. And that I, found, I thought that was very very strange. Uh, so uh, that was were some of the things that have had this uh, yeah, difficulty. So, yeah. What advice did you give uh, yeah, um, uh, the advice that, that would be to, as I said before, you know, if, if you uh, if, if you don't see anybody in, in your surroundings with wheelchair, it doesn't mean that there are there aren't anybody. There must be somebody in wheelchair, and and to make you know when you make a, a place accessible then people will come. People they, they will come. If if you if you don't uh, take it, this into account, then um, many people will stay away because they will they will not feel welcome. You know? And and the the message or every center that we build as a community should be a, a place to embrace all or no matter if you're blind or no matter if you're yeah, in the wheelchair or so on. So the, the, the practical things, you can always talk about them, but the thing about feeling welcome, that is the, the, the biggest uh, challenge, I think. So, so what, what happened to me was that, uh, as I told you before, that I, I grew up in Argentina, so um, uh, I was used from little, from a, a little time to, you know, to overcome different things and not really thinking about what other people uh, thought about it. So sometimes I provoked a lot of people, but uh, I tried to do good, you know. I tried to come to the mosque and, and uh, if, uh, people, they sometimes they felt that, that I shouldn't come in because I had the, this wheelchair. Um, but I didn't have any other possibilities to come in, so, so I tried to, you know, wipe the, 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 the wheels off and so on. So. So uh, some places they let me in, and some places they they didn't. Let me. So uh, it all depends on uh, how you how you communicate with the master. So the message that I think that the responsibility of the master is to, <coughs> to make the people feel more.
change as a controller. Um, just some yeah. around that yeah. potential Iman and coming to Islam, uh, how you as a person for Islam and disability. Yeah. And you are now an Islam after your years. Yeah. I, I think um, they, they change. The person of this has changed in my personality or my character. I, 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 I think that uh, I, I don't think so. Actually, I think uh, because I, uh, I, uh, I experienced so many things before. So what I try to do is is to fight for them, for for every every uh, people if if they're Muslim or non-Muslim. But the uh, Unfortunately, when I came to Islam, then I experienced that people, uh, my, my fellow Muslims, they put a lot of barriers for me instead of opening doors for me. So uh, the experiences that I had before, I had to use them to, you know, to, to get forward. So uh, the, what I find is, is that uh, you can do this, you can, it's possible to do this. Um, uh, but but uh, the character change I don't know I don't think so in, in this in this regard. Um, um, we have a written question here. Um, it says my father in a wheelchair was refused entry into a masjid because they said his wheels were not clean. How do you overcome this? Yeah, <laughs> um, I I've experienced that too and. Uh, Actually, it was very. It, it was very. Uh, I, I think I found it strange because uh, when I was when, when we were in Umrah, in uh, both in Medina and Mecca, uh, I, I was in, in the wheelchair and uh, and I didn't, you know, and I, that was good that I didn't get stuck to get into the message. But after I got I got back and I experienced several times. In, in Granada, in Spain, they stopped me too. To let me, they didn't let me in, in the mosque, and in, in Denmark too, the place where I was stuck. So uh, the the experience of the message where I go is that uh, I kept coming, and uh, uh, they they tried to to find a solution so so that that I could come in. So uh, uh, I think. Sometimes it's, it takes dialogue, you know, to to uh, to prove to the master that it's okay. Because uh, I thought um, I thought that in, sometimes when I when I had to get into the, the to the master, then I thought, what? How was it in the in the in the time of the prophet Was it so? You know, was there any earth on, on inside the mosque, or was it? You know, sand or because in the in the desert there, you know, there's sand and earth and, and so on. So how was it? And was it possible for people to to get into the mosque or what? What was the how how, how were the the difficulties in, in, in this time? And how can we overcome them? Because I don't think it's it's right to just shut people up. Uh, so <clears throat> I I don't have the the necessary knowledge. To talk about this, but I, uh, I just try to to use my common sense that this can be possible to to keep people out. So I just keep coming to this place, and they change their minds. So, so, yes. Yeah. What would you um, what would you like to see happen in the What would you have, you know, the <coughs> in the ideal world? Yeah. The perfect world. What would you expect from the those people who are organized or are organizations, what kind of procedures would you, you know, expect? You know, yeah. Uh, the ideal world, for me, would be that the message would be open for, for everybody that wants to come to us. Even uh, in, in a wheelchair or with a, you know, when you're blind and with any disability, uh, but the thing is, for me as an activist in, in Denmark, uh, I I am aware of that it's very important that you as 
as uh, activists are visible to people. So we have, to, as, uh, as people with disability, we have to fight for these rights because there are, there are, I think there are, there, are, there, are, there are many rights that we don't get, but uh, we have to fight for them ourselves so other people can see that, okay, we are, we are you know, we have this, uh, the right to be a member of, of our of our society too. So, uh, and in, in that way, we get into a contact with, or uh, into a dialogue with the, with the message or the centers. So, yeah. With regard to the previous question, um, Sheikh Abdul is going to tell you what he would like to Just to answer the question about the, uh, what, the, what we should do about the brother, the, the person whose father is in a wheelchair. <coughs> First of all, it's completely illegal. It's completely illegal for a mosque to exclude anybody. Under the Equality and Human Rights Act, the, law, the mosque is breaking the law. And that, that has to be brought to the attention of the mosque because <coughs> you are not allowed to exclude anybody on the basis of disability or any other, um, what they call, uh, specific characteristics. So that's one thing that must always bear in mind. The law is always on your side. Now, the problem is, is that most of us are too scared to take the mosque on. Or we're too worried that we shouldn't take the mosque on. Or we think it's haram to take the mosque on. First of all, it's not haram to take the mosque on. It is at least mandu and probably fault. Why? Because what you're doing by establishing the, the rights of other people, other Muslims to perform the worship, you are making the sadaqah the jari, something which will establish something for the long term. And this has two things which are good for the mosque. First of all, it brings the mosque into the law, so it's no longer illegal. The second thing it does, it opens up people's minds, because what it now does is that it makes them think about disabled people. And if you listen to what Ricardo was saying, he's not that bothered about problems. I know Ricardo. The guy plays rugby. You know, he, a little rug isn't, there's no obstacle that we have. You know, we once sat and we had this massive mountain in, in front of us in our class, and we just laughed. And he said, do you reckon I can get up on my own? And I said, no, you can't. And I pushed it. But full well, I knew in my heart, there's no way that he wouldn't get up there. Those obstacles are not a problem. The obstacle he talked about was the committing, the people in the mosque. Those people have to change their attitude. And the, one of the ways to do that is to ask them to think about disabled people. And the problem is very simple. In most cases, all you need to do is to have a separate wheelchair in the mosque, so that so the car can roll up to the, to the door, and if they don't want him to use his own wheelchair, just gets out of this wheelchair and moves into another wheelchair. If Hanuman Ricardo is quite flexible. Not everyone has the same kind of flexibility with their wheelchairs. It might be that they only have one wheelchair that they can use. In this case, all they need to do is to put a cover on the carpet. That's not that difficult. Whatever the, whatever the problem is, it can be solved. And so we need to, have, as Ricardo said, open up that dialogue. But for us, who are concerned about disabled people, the thing is that we must remember that this is the law. This is the law of the land, and it, on top of that, this is part of Islam. Part of Islam is to make this message, to spread this message, message to everybody. It doesn't say spread the message to everybody except disabled people, or everybody except blind people. It says you have to spread the message. And if the mosque isn't going to be open to spread the message, it's failed. It's failed in its basic function of establishing Islam in this country. So it's quite, quite, you have to stand up and you have to, to make, an, make an effort. And inshallah the problems can be solved with just a little bit of dialogue. And also it works in, the, in your advantage. I, I work for the local council. Um, and our mosque in our local area in Bells Hill is the only fully accessible mosque in Scotland. Only fully accessible mosque in Scotland. It also has a gym on the mosque premises. And the mosque, why has why it got a gym? It's so that this, the, the ladies can come to the, to the gym completely free. Uh, 
it's, got, it's, it's open to them for three hours of every day, open to the brothers for three, hour, three hours a day. How did they get this gene in there? Because they've got contacts in the council. And the council, contacts in the council know that there's money available from the health board because Pakistani women suffer, uh, have the highest, in Scotland, have the highest rate of um, heart disease and other various illnesses. So within within that uh, approach to improve the, improve the health of people, they worked with the council, with the health board, with the local community, with the local women's groups, and what was the outcome? Is we've got a fully accessible mosque with a gym. So it, we, we all win if we just start working together to try and solve problems. And that's all it takes, it's just a little bit of ingenuity and a bit of oomph.